Hey everyone, if you've been following the channel, all of this probably looks fairly familiar. Uh, and as you might have guessed, in this video we are going to add about 6-ish kilowatt hours to Project Overkill. Uh, this isn't really going to be a step-by-step -step the way the first set of videos was. This is kind of going to be a, a time lapse more or less because I've already gone through all of the steps of this process. So let's just jump right in. The first thing we need to do is uh, solder our balance leads onto all of our terminals on here. So I got to take all these off and start soldering this up. Alright, so I went through and pre-tinned all of our terminals underneath these covers and we are going to wire up our balance leads according to this because it's the 14S layout. Now the way this ends up working out, our main negative uh, is here on the left, uh, wow, on the right. Um, and then we're going to use one hole connector for the first bank, or the first battery uh, here. So each one of these connectors are actually going to end up individually connecting to each of those batteries so we got one through seven for this right uh, connector and then eight through 14 for the left connector so that works out pretty well so these can actually be soldered on and then they can be moved around individually and just plugged into the bms when we're ready to put them in place one other thing to mention really quick um, if you need this instruction uh, pdf or if you need the apk for the bluetooth app for your phone, email me because I have these ready to go and I can send them to you on Google Drive. So now I have all of the balance leads wired up and we're ready to hook up the BMSs and I'm going to use that charger. It's a 4 amp charger. I'm probably going to tie these two strings in parallel so I can charge them all together. And I know I said you should never rely on a BMS to top balance, but in this case I don't really have a choice because these are welded in. So I kind of have to let these charge up and let the BMS balance these out. So I am going to be monitoring these while they're charging to make sure that there's no overcharging going on in case one of these BMSs is faulty. Um, but yeah, not the best of situations, but there really is no other option with these. All right, so I have all my parameters put in here. Um, if you have multiple BMSs, you can change the identifier up here. So you can see this is 537 that I'm connected to. Um, and if you look at the device list, you'll see 531 to whatever, you know, there's a bunch of them in here. Um, so you can select each, uh, you can select the individual BMS you're trying to set parameters for or monitor. Um, because in when they come from the factory, they all have the exact same address. So it's a mix. You never know which one you're going to actually connect to. It's kind of just a, a gamble. Um, so I went through and changed all of these so I can connect to a specific one uh, when I want to. And to do that, you go in here to BMS Hardware, 
parameter and then up here at the top there's ble address and you can type in whatever number you want here and then when it brings it up on your bluetooth list it'll it'll show that number so just a handy little tip in case you have several of these that you're running okay so i just turned the charger on and you can see we have uh 537 and 536 right here so if i look at the current parameters you can see that it is charging there's 102 watts going into this battery string 2.2 amps because i have these in parallel so it's splitting the difference on the current so if we look at the 536 which is the other one that's in parallel right now 1.8 amps so my guess is that that is 536 this is 537 and it's the voltage has to rise in this battery string to to spill over to this one and that's why there's lower amperage going into this one they're still really in balance from when they came out of the pack these have been sitting in my garage for like well since i did the teardown really? <laughs> yeah and they're still they're still holding up strong all right so we got all of these balanced up with the bmss everything went well with that so now we're going to start moving all of these in here and we have had the five strings up here running flawlessly for several months now everything's going well with those being in parallel uh, i wasn't sure if we were going to run into any issues but everything's been good so far so now we're going to add two more strings right down in here we're going to start with the positive side because that's going to be in the back and we're going to measure that cable out and i think we're going to try fusing these like this and then this is going to go to the left string this will go to the right string and then each string will still be independently fused. 160 volts DC, and it is rated for an interruption rating of 20,000 amps. So, and it's a fast acting T, class T fuse, which is what you want for stuff like this. So now we're ready to wire up our screens. And if you didn't catch this on the original videos for Project Overkill, this is the main positive and negative for the screen power. It's a very wide voltage input. I don't remember what it is, but I can use either the a single 7S battery or I can use the whole 48 volt setup for this. So really wide voltage range input. And then this is for from the BMS into the screen. And for some reason you have to flip the green wire and the black wire. So the the green wire on this connector needs to go into the black wire on this connector and the black wire on this connector needs to go in the green wire on this connector to work properly. So had to figure that out the hard way. So we got these all done and you can see we got the heat shrink on there and everything we switched the black and green so we're ready to put these on and uh, we can start start moving our modules into position all right so i have my positive wire mocked up for right now it looks like it's going to be long enough i need to put a, a lug on here still and that will connect to these two fuses here and then these two fuses are gonna split out to our two battery strings here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a cable lug on this. I just wanted to make sure it was long enough. Uh, I might actually end up trimming this down to about right here. So that way this can split out and then we can have two separate leads going out. So that's gonna run from here. Oop. That's gonna run from here up the back. And then it's gonna run up behind here. And then this is the other end of it and this will connect in to our uh, main positive bus bar here. So I didn't run it the same as I did on all of these other ones for the original build, but it doesn't make sense to use twice as much cable to run the same uh, to run the same two strings when a one gauge wire is capable of handling 100 amps. And we're never gonna see that on these. So, all right, let's get our cable lugs on here.
right, so I'm going to connect to this lug right here. So I'm going to go ahead and feed this up now, awkwardly in the back. Uh, uh, there it is. All right, let me see if I can reach this thing. You guys are along for the ride. Ugh. I'm turning on the printer. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna bring this up. I'm gonna feed this in between our negatives here, and I wanna bring this under these. Hopefully you guys can see that. All right, bring that on there. So that worked out okay. I gotta remember to tighten that down so that feeds in with these kind of evenly. I like that a little bit better. I don't like that this is crossing over like that, but I don't really have a choice. So now we have this here, we can hook our, oh, you can't see. We have this here, we can hook our fuses up to this and get ready to bring these other uh, cells in. All right. All right, let's go ahead and run this through here, this through here. And we have a lock nut for this. Man, I can cut this in half. I'm going to be able to run both of these. All right, let's do it. All right, so the first string is hooked up. I connected this loosely because it's not actually running to this yet. You can see here uh, we have 49.5 volts and up here we have 46.6. So we don't wanna connect these <laughs> in parallel yet because we'll get a very large inrush from these into the other strings. So we're gonna have to charge the other strings up to uh, equalize those before we connect these in parallel. But I do have my BMS connected right here and I just ran my balance leads in and then this connector ran to the screen right here. And then I just have the power running to the negative here and the positive here for the uh, screen power. Yeah, I mean, this one's done. Now I just gotta get the other set over here and we'll be up and running, ready to charge up those other ones and parallel these in. All right, so we have the second string over here hooked up now. Um, I know the BMS wiring is a mess right now. We'll go ahead and zip tie that here once we get everything squared away. Um, you can see this uh, battery string is at 49.5 volts and this battery string is at 49.4, so they're pretty close. I could parallel these together, but I'm gonna wait. Um, we do have our <sighs> fuses up here. And this ended up being on the wrong side. I thought it was supposed to be over here, but it's supposed to be here. So this is way too long. So this is all probably gonna get pushed over like this and this will loop over like that. Um, we have these batteries charging now through our inverter. Uh, they're charging at 41 watts a piece, give or take. So we're gonna bring this voltage up to the 49.5 that these batteries down here are at, and then we'll parallel these in. 
I have to run the negative for these still, which I'm just going to tie these two BMSs together directly and then just run a single negative up here, probably through the back as well, and um, tie that into the bus bar that is back. Ugh. Hopefully you can see that back there. All right, so I have these paralleled in. You can see we have the negatives here. Uh, that's temporary just for testing, and then we zip tied it up here to get it out of the way. So you can see these are at 46.9-ish volts. Up here is around 46.9, so these have equalized. And now I'm going to turn on the charger. Okay, and we should see wattage going into every one of these now so top five have power going in and then these bottom ones 28 watts and 28 watts so everything is now in parallel so we'll let this get up to a higher state of charge and yeah that's pretty much it these are all ready to go these two are successfully paralleled in i got to clean up that wiring but project overkill now has about 16 kilowatt hours of usable energy um this is 88 percent peak efficient so that definitely draws down on it but like i've said before with this power saver um it's automatic and it'll sense so it uses far less so this thing uses like 48 watts on standby with the inverter actually on and with power saver it sends a short pulse like once every second to see if there's a load like a, a sump pump for instance and if it senses a load then it turns the inverter on so it uses significantly less power all right everyone that's going to be it for this video we have all seven strings in parallel and the voltages are all balanced now so now it's just a matter of charging all of the batteries up and monitoring over the next few weeks but we have 16 kilowatt hours up and running for project overkill now i don't think i'm going to expand the capacity of project overkill beyond the 16 kilowatt hours but there may be some other upgrades for that project in the future all right, everyone, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you on the next one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we are ready to wire up our screen wiring. And if you didn't catch it on the first set of parts for Project Over... If you didn't catch it on the first bit... Uh, so now we're ready to wire up our screens. And if you didn't see this on the Project Overkill previous... and the previous... <laughs> Uh, and you can see over here, uh, I have some other, uh, but I may do some other upgrades. So, ah. I don't think I'm going to expand the capacity of Project Overkill beyond the 16 kilowatt hours, but I may do some other projects and upgrades on that, which starts with S and ends in solar. Ha <laughs> ha!